What's going on everyone? It's RGB Tech back here again. In today's video, we're taking a look at the newly released official version of the Nether SX2 PS2 emulator for Android. And this time, I'm testing it on a low-end phone to see how well it can really perform. About two months ago, I already made a video covering the complete setup and best settings for this emulator. That was the Beta 2 build, and it works on almost any Android phone. So if you missed that, make sure to check out the card above or the link in the description. After a long wait, Nether SX2 is finally back with its official version 2.0 release. This updated PS2 emulator for Android brings a whole lot of improvements, from major bug fixes and smoother performance to a redesigned user interface and more. Now let's go to releases. Nether SX2 version 2.0 is here, and it's fully open source, available right on its official GitHub. This is one of the most feature-packed updates we've seen yet for a PS2 emulator on Android. It comes with improved on-screen touch controls, updated widescreen and no interlacing patches, and even better compatibility for Mali GPU devices. So in this video, I'm gonna test it on a low-end Mali GPU device. The phone I'm using right now is a Galaxy device powered by the Exynos 7904 with a Mali G71 2-core GPU, which is almost a seven-year-old phone. It comes with Vulkan 1.1 support, though the drivers are pretty outdated as of today, it has 4 GB of RAM. All right, so I've already installed the emulator and set it up. Everything from importing the BIOS to adjusting the settings. I've provided the full setup video link below, so do check it out. Now let's first boot the BIOS to make sure everything is configured properly on this phone. It's working fine without any issues. You can also see the usage stats at the top of the screen. Now let's go to settings. In general, everything is the same as usual. If you want, you can enable the FPS meter, CPU usage stats, or other options. Next, go to system. In the performance section, make sure to set double E cycle rate under clocking to 50% and cycle skip to maximum. Enable multi-threaded VU1. Also, set the frame rate control for both NTSC and PAL from 30 Hz to 60 Hz. Now go to graphics. Set the GPU renderer to Vulkan and choose the upscale multiplier based on your device. Lower is always better. A range from 1x to 2x should be enough depending on your phone. In audio, set the interpolation mode to linear. That's it. These are the recommended settings. If you're on a very low-end device, Use the lowest possible settings and set the renderer to OpenGL instead. Now it's time for the test. I've already imported some games, and I'll be testing them with different settings throughout this video. Be sure to follow the timestamps below for a quick look. Let's first start with Burnout 3.
So that's how emulator runs pretty well on this low-end Molly device. With the right settings, some games are playable, though performance will vary. Also, do check out the complete setup video. I've already tested it on a mid-high-end device, and the results were much better. If this helped, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications for more. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.